Josh, I suppose congratulations are in order. It feels like every time we're speaking to you, you're either winning an award or you're nominated for award, the World Fair of the Year nomination this week. How do you, how do you feel about that? Thanks very much. Um, yeah, it's obviously a, a lovely thing to be to be nominated for. Um, it's obviously uh, very, yeah, I'm very grateful for for being a part of a, a very good team that's done really well this t this year in Ireland and obviously in Leinster it's gone well reasonably well as well. So um, yeah, it's a very pleasing thing to get. And you said throughout the year like that it's not really something you dwell too much on in the moment to keep the focus, but. When you see your name listed alongside all those other names of people who either won it or been nominated down the years, it must be a pretty, pretty special feeling. It is, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, um, I suppose it, it's nice to, to, to get reward for, for hard work. I guess it's pro things have probably gone, gone my way a good bit this year. Kind of get the bounce of the ball here and there, um, but it is strange, as you said. It's in the middle of we're in the middle of a, a test match week and. Um, it's kind of yeah, it's it's obviously uh, a nice thing personally, but it's kind of I have to switch on pretty quickly to to getting prepped for for Australia. So um, certainly not a maybe in the if it happened in the off season, if you're nominated in the off season, you kind of have a bit more time to think over it. But I guess uh, for the moment, it's it's focusing on on trying to put in another good performance as a team this weekend. And just from the, the team point of view, it's obviously a, a good sign of where our Irish rugby is that you've two players nominated for the men's player, another two nominated for breakthrough player and, and Andy for, for coach of the year as well. Yeah it is. Um I think it's a testament to I suppose Andy and, and the coaching staff that they've um managed to to bring out bring out the best in, in a lot of us and um it's obviously I think it's I mean when the team does well, all the other players, everyone who's playing looks better than as well and um, I think having having the good, I suppose we think we have a really good group at the moment, and um, look at the quality of, of player in each position. And I think when you have that amount of quality and good players, it just makes everyone around them look good as well. So I think it's kind of once once you have one, you get the other kind of thing. So um, yeah, it's been it's uh, it's nice, especially for 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 Andy as well. He's 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 been brilliant um, in in developing the group and trying to help us improve as much as we can. So uh, it's great for him as well to be nominated. Josh, the South Africa game was quite, quite a bruising encounter. Uh, how does it feel to have everyone sort of back in this week, mostly uh, fit and firing? And how keen are you all to finish the, this season for Ireland on, on a high? Yeah, hey, we're very keen. Um, it's It was a, obviously, as you said, a tough game against South Africa. Um, last week was was a, a, a different challenge, I guess, against a, a very good uh Fiji side, we were we were kind of disappointed with a good few elements of our performance, but um, definitely very mo motivated to play a, a, what is will also be a very good Australian side. Um, a lot of threats to be a very different style to to South Africa, um, but we're certainly very excited to to try and finish with our best performance. Um, it was cer certainly been a focus uh, to try and to try and keep improving week on week and. Um, I suppose there'll be things we want to fix up from from last weekend, and definitely want to finish finish this block of games with with a performance we can be proud of that'll hopefully set us up well for for the Six Nations. Uh, with their defeat last week, is, is this that a help or a hindrance? Do you think? So it's hard to know. Uh, when a team when a team loses, they I suppose you see that there's weaknesses there, but then probably more so you see that they're going to be. They're going to be pretty fired up and, and annoyed uh, having lost, and I'm sure they're disappointed. So you sometimes get that that uh, kickback reaction. So um, certainly be expecting a, a very very fired up Australian team, I reckon. What's, what's the key to consistency? You see wild swings across results from week to week from most teams, yourselves and France seem to have nailed it to, to, to this point. That I'm Um, I'd say there's a lot of things come down to it. Um, I think there's we we've had a good focus on uh, working with the likes of Gary Keegan, the kind of mental skills coach, and uh, individually lads making sure they have their own prep right. So each individual is trying to prepare as well as they can to get that consistent performance. And then um, I think as well the focus on on learning from from previous games and. Um, 
trying to do the basics really really well i mean there's a lot of the times when we play well it's not it's not necessarily fancy things coming off but it's just doing the really simple things and sometimes you get more glamorous moments but trying to do the the basic things really well and i think the the coaching staff have have driven that really well um over the last couple of years and certainly i'd say it comes down to a lot the learning from mistakes willingness to improve and as i said individuals trying to get themselves as good as they can um i suppose i should also mention the competition i think there's there's a in every in every position at the moment there's a lot of competition people pushing for places and i suppose it means that that every player whoever's in in any position really has to be has to be performing at their best and they know there's a bit of pressure behind them so it all it all feeds in i guess to 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 having better performances Um, I think a lot of the focus was on like there were certainly things we did really really well um and they were highlighted in the meetings um but I think uh we we kind of we'd have a standard that the coaches would expect of us and the players uh would expect and I suppose we we very much highlighted the times where um we weren't doing things as well whether someone wasn't working hard enough or just a lapse in concentration a bit of ill discipline um, it was a focus on, on those on those kind of things, on keeping trying to improve on the standards we expect of ourselves. Um, I think uh, it can be tricky sometimes when, say, when a team goes a man down and the game can can get a bit uh, disrupted that way. But um, certainly we we have standards and and things we want to and the a way we want to play the game. And I think it's we've kind of focused on on trying to get back get back to that and. and Put in performances we're proud of. Josh, can I, can I just ask what what does being the number one ranked in the team in the world mean to the players? I mean, does it change the mentality? Do you feel like you're going out to defend the number one position, or do you do you believe that you're going to be shot at now? I mean, what, what does it actually mean to, to the squad? Um, I, don't, I think it's a I think it's something we can be we can be proud of. Um, it's a uh, it's something we certainly, I suppose, Irish teams wouldn't necessarily be, have been used to it traditionally to being normally often be the underdog. Um, but it's something that we've, I suppose, we enjoy. We don't talk about it a huge amount. It's not something we're uh, necessarily aiming for. But I think it's the, um, it's it's where we want to be. It's ultimately the if you're putting in performances and performing as well as you want to be, then that will result in in hopefully better rankings and that kind of thing so um certainly it's it's something we're 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 obviously pleased with but it's not it's not something we hugely focus on um i'm not sure how lads feel individually i don't think it uh for me anyway i just um focus on on playing the opposition you're playing um i think there, there obviously is there obviously is that element where you're thinking what what's the other team thinking here and I guess they're they're coming to every team obviously wants to be in, in that number one spot and um it probably does more for opposition's motivation than it would for ours, I guess. And Josh, what's it like to be part of the autumn test series? So obviously it's all about selection, preparation for the Six Nations, the World Cup, so I'm sure it can be quite fun on at times. It is, yeah. Um I think it's a I mean, it's it's great. I mean, you look at the games we've uh, you get to play teams you wouldn't come across as often. It was my first time playing South Africa, uh, Fiji. I haven't played I hadn't played them before, um, and you're playing like you're playing against the world champions in South Africa, Fiji. have been been really really good. They're improving huge amounts of side, and and then obviously Australia this week. It's you get a chance to play those those big test matches. Um, I don't think. Any of us see it as a? We're not talking about oh, this is just practice for Six Nations. It's very much a, a, an event on its own that we're we're focused on trying to on trying to win these games, and they mean a huge amount. Um, for you can see it within every team. I think to play to play for your country and um, and try and win in those big games. I think if you if you sit in the Aviva for any of the games, uh, and hopefully on Saturday 
it'll be the same. Um, what it means to the crowd and everyone, what it means to us is 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 massive. And just when you mentioned the Viva there having a good atmosphere, do you feel that on the pitch? Does it make a difference? It does definitely, yeah, it does. Um, I mean, there's certainly times where you kind of wouldn't notice when you're when you're in the middle of the game. You're just focused on on uh, trying to do your job, but. Um, I mean, when the stoppages or um, or if we get a bit of momentum in play and you, you kind of get that adrenaline rush because you're you're feeding off the noise of the crowd, um, it's it's incredible and it makes it it's an incredibly enjoyable place to play when you're playing in front of fans. Um, I kind of find personally, if you're even if if you're playing at home or away when it's loud and even if they're cheering for you or against you, it's just I find it great. It look brilliant, great fun to have. To have just a load of noise and people supporting. What's been the best stadium that you played in? Um, gosh, uh, I think Stade de France, the packed house, is probably probably my favourite. I'd say um, certainly one of the most challenging. Anyway, but I'd say that would be up there for sure. He's been great. Um, yeah, he's been he's been training really well. Um, he seems seems very very calm and uh, he's got good good confidence about him. I think it's it must be tricky coming in as a as a number ten without maybe knowing too many of the guys as well. And uh, and he obviously wouldn't have played. I've never played with him before. I wouldn't really have known him too well. And uh, and he's he's straight into that that ten position, uh, organizing people around and. Um, he's he's done really well, really well. He's he's trained very well, um, and yeah, he seems a, he's going to be a, a brilliant, brilliant player. He already is, but um, it's very promising. I was delighted for him. It obviously meant a huge amount to him. You could see uh, to play for Ireland for the first time, and uh, very exciting talent. And you found yourself just taking on a bit more leadership in the team as well, just given the form over the last year or so, and kind of becoming the mainstay of that group. Um, I've tried to try to influence as much as I can, I guess. Um, I mean, uh, certainly. Well, I guess the more the more games you play and um, the the more experience you get, uh, I suppose I'll, I'd be in more a position to be able to hand on some advice, especially to the other the other back rows and and number sevens. And I certainly learn from 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 them as well, um, from other lads in the position. So, I mean, I. I do enjoy the I do enjoy helping some of the younger guys out or um trying to make sure sure people are comfortable or um whether it's defence try and try and add where I can but it's certainly something I've been been trying to add to my game anyway is um sometimes I've talked to I remember Stuart Lancaster saying to me before he was like it's you have like really good players can can play well for themselves but then it's it's learning to to try and make everyone else play really well as well, so that's something I'm certainly will be trying to work on because it's it's one thing trying to play well yourself, but I mean you look at someone like Johnny Johnny Sexton as well documented how he pushes on the team, but he makes he makes lads around him play really well and, and he pushes them to be better. So it's certainly something um, I've been trying to work on and something I will continue to try and be better at. Yeah.